we kind of have a love hate relationship with Zack Snyder on this show. Oh no, it's straight up hate. Well, it Aww. is now. It is. It is now. We cut Zack some slack when he when his daughter committed suicide. <clears throat> uh, we we cut him a lot of slack when he left the the world of DC uh, to take care of his family, and and we mm -hmm. completely understand and sympathize with him. Uh, that that is the most traumatic thing that any parent can go through, and, and we're sorry that that happened to him. Uh, however, the director of and writer producer of such films as Watchmen and Three Hundred. Um, really just went off the rails when he made DC movies. And we're talking about the early films. And now we can officially call them the early films that stunk. I mean, we're talking Man of Steel. He had an executive producer credit. Uh, Aquaman. Yeah. Well, but we that that could be that could be anything. We don't really know what executive producer credit might be. Um so anyway, all right. So so the first few DC movies that everyone likes to make fun of are Zack Snyder films. And now, and this, this poor guy, he keeps trying to be relevant, all right? He keeps talking to the press, and he'll make these odd statements about, you know, a Snyder cut of his films and what his original intention was and what his vision and his theme and his plan. And, oh, my God, if only Warner Brothers hadn't let me go take care of my family, I would have had this cool, awesome idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now he's gone completely off the rails. <clears throat> I mean, he was at a panel recently and he just went bananas, absolute ballistic. Now, uh, I have the, the transcript here that I got from uh, Entertainment Weekly. And um, you want to put in the edited version on screen or no? Yeah, you want to put the edited version up, up there on our Facebook live chat, facebook.com slash GYGO radio. And I'm going to bleep out a few things here because, again, it just kind of goes off. Now, let me first say this before I even get to the transcript. So, he has a right to defend his works. He has a right to defend his point of view. And what he says really isn't that far off base. But it's how he says it, the tone, the way he lashes out his attitude, that just makes him an absolute embarrassment. All right, so here we go. He says, quote, Someone says to me, Batman killed a guy. Meaning that's like, you know, a bad thing. Yeah. And he's, he's not supposed to kill. And I'm like, bleep, really? Wake the bleep up. I guess that's what I'm saying. Once you lost your virginity to this bleeping movie, and then you come out and say to me something like, my superhero wouldn't do that. I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, down the bleeping road on that. It's a cool point of view to be like, my heroes are innocent. That's cool. But you're living in a bleeping dream world. Yeah, first of all, he says like a lot, doesn't he? Like I I've known thirteen year old like. girls who've known who've said like last night. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> I think like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and he should hang out sometime. Have you heard her speak, by the way? It's like and and like, like and, and like oh my god, uh, guys, uh, like, like, oh my god, like, like totally, like oh my god. So so he says that a lot, and then the f bombs that he drops. It wasn't you know the PG thirteen where you're allowed that one. The guy just goes off. I don't even want to read it again. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, wow. It's unprofessional. First of all, I taught him. I'm sorry. And secondly, just wow. Seriously. <laughs> God. All right. So let, let's, let's break this down real quick. Yes. Batman does kill. Well, he has killed. He has killed. He won't. In the thirties, he killed. Uh, in, 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 40s. in the forties. In the yes. And I mean, there, there are probably some people in the movies that uh, in the 1989 well, Batman, he does drop a guy down the bell tower. But that's a movie, though. In um, with movies, speaking, you have to have a you have to have a conclusion, and even that, I don't think that was on purpose. But I'm just saying, <laughs> it was an accident. I, I, he slipped. Batman has Bat killed oil. people. Yes, he has, <clears throat> and people were a little surprised to see him wielding a gun in Justice League, and you know, almost killing Superman and Batman. Well, Superman. To be fair, that's more like Dark Knight Returns, Batman, and even in the Batman Beyond pilot, he had a gun. And then you and also have the Batman Beyond suit on. Uh, Thomas Wayne in Flashpoint Paradox. Well, that's he different, also, though. But he's still Batman. Eh, he not is, really. Did he's he wear not, a Batman costume? He, he's not. He, but Thomas Wayne's different. I, I, I agree. And all right. But his, his point is, Zack Snyder's point is, this is a darker, grittier version of Batman. If he kills, he it's, kills. Okay. I mean, that. Well, what's the big deal? I mean, I'm sure Superman 
killed more than a few people. In fact, uh, apart I mean, from Zod, you know, Superman's killed people in Metropolis during the big battle scenes and all that. <laughs> it, like it, it happens. Movie. It happens. I get his point of view. It's the way he puts it out there, though. Um, I mean, he's, yeah, he's not the Punisher. He's not Daredevil. He's not killing in, in, in that way. Well, I'm kind of, sort of. But wow. Zack Snyder, this famed director of films, is talking like a pissed off teenager. And that's why Zack Snyder should not go anywhere near the DC films again. Yes. No, keep him far all. away from the DC films. Like Ben Affleck in a superhero movie. Keep no. The, he, I liked his Batman. I wish he got like as a Dark Knight no. Returns version of it. Yeah, I like that. I didn't uh, like him at all. I thought he was garbage. Oh, well, that's a discussion for another. <laughs> yeah. <day. laughs> How much time do we have? Holy <laughs> cow, man! We we could spend an entire show talking about that. So this is this is a guy who just who lost his cool. Now he's speaking to a panel of Batman fans, uh, Zack Snyder Batman fans. So there was a lot of applause. If you go look it up on YouTube, you can find the panel and the discussion. And there are lots of applause and laughter and that sort of thing. But I think that we should expect better from Zack Snyder. I mean, I, I can't see Patty Jenkins going off like this, the director of Wonder Woman. Uh, I can't see Steven Spielberg going off like this. I, I can't see uh, James Wan, you know, no. director of Aquaman. I can't see him going off like but this. I don't him. expect better from Zack Snyder because I've seen his movies, 300, very violent, much nudity. Watchmen probably had language. I haven't seen it all the way through, yeah, but it had it a lot of language, a lot yeah. of violence. I don't expect more from Zack Snyder. That's why I always thought he was a bad idea to direct a DC film. I don't mind him directing one, but much like well, Tim Burton, you just need to know when to stop. And Tim Burton, <laughs> well, when you look at his movies too, the first two were great, and the reason he stopped was because of marketing. They didn't like that it was so dark. It was they, so they dark. They wanted that cartoonier it, side. When then that's when you got they wanted to be able to sell the toys at McDonald's. Exactly, but then yeah. you got what's his name, um, Joe Schumacher. Yeah, and they went. They didn't do very well. They want comic book. It. Yeah, they want straight they, up. Comic they went book. straight up camp. They went so far in the other direction. Holy rusted metal, Batman. I mean, yeah, no, that was uh, funny. I, it's, it was a cute nod, but it was you, so. No. You know, Barbara Gordon, who's Alfred's niece, all of a sudden, who's coming from England without the English accent and rides motorcycles, and it. Well, that it, just went. I'll, yeah. Batman or Robin, we shouldn't even count. <laughs> yeah, Joe Schumacher should not have Bat nipples. It. Need I say uh, more? Just, yeah, no right. kidding. This is why Superman works alone. Uh, uh -huh. I'll, I'll get drive through. <laughs> I don't know. All I right. Just, anyway, <laughs> I think they should have been off on a tangent there. I'm kind of curious what Joss Whedon would have done with Justice League. Because didn't he step in when Zack Snyder stepped out? He did. Yeah. He, um, he The movie was, from what I heard, 70 percent, 80 percent done. And, and Joss Whedon just finished it off and touched some parts up here and there. Yeah. So it makes me wonder, like, what would happen if Joss Whedon would have had the control of the whole thing? Because, I mean, he did a great job with Serenity. There'd have been more daylight. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. Probably, probably not as many legs up shots of women. Yeah, uh, that that's for sure. Zack Snyder loves those. Well, he and Michael Bay both, to be honest. Yeah, they do. But so, Z so stuff. Zack Snyder just I I don't I don't understand. I don't know if he feels pressured. I don't know if he feels jaded, stilted. I, I don't know what caused this temper tantrum. But it was it was it was a he, five year old temper he's tantrum. He's upset because he didn't get to complete his vision, because his vision's stupid. At this point, I'm like Marvel's be... vision, which is just dead. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, he seemed, he reminds me of Edward Norton right now. How Edward Norton is so mad at Marvel for the whole Hulk issue. Yeah. And this is kind of the same thing. He's he is he's pretty angry. All right, there's no question about well, it. Well, Edward Norton is a diva. And yeah, well, that's straight. Zack Snyder's the same way though. So he's this getting there. so now this also comes out from the panel. Zack Snyder goes on uh, a a little calmer now to talk about what his vision was for the justice league movie. And he's uh, for justice league two. And he says, and that's where we would end up in a distant future where dark side has taken over the earth, where Superman has succumbed to the anti-life equation. And there are a few members of the justice league that survived to that world and that they were fighting Batman and a broken half of cyborg. There's only half of him because of whatever happened. That, that's Zach, by the way, not me. They were working on an equation to jump back and tell Bruce. Bruce. So, uh, Bruce Wayne. Oh, okay. Back in Bruce Wayne. When like Flash came back in, in um, Bat, Batman v Superman? I think so, yeah. yeah. When, he, when Flash was there, he said, Lois. Exactly. So, what happened was <laughs> is that Darkseid Dark kills Lois Lane and Wonder Woman, I think, too. Uh, he, kills, he kills several members of the Justice League and he kills Lois Lane. Superman goes bonkers. 
uh, succumbs to the anti-life equation and just goes absolutely insane. And so the world is now taken over by dark side. And that's could I'm sorry. Could Zack Snyder get any darker with this? A little I, bit. I mean, this, this is like injustice on steroids. I mean, yeah, pretty much. It really sounds like the injustice storyline for the first game. Almost. I, I mean, there's, there's yeah. almost nothing about this that I would want to see in a theater. I it's mean, sad there that I do. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just my morbid side. I guess. Now, look, the end of Infinity War, when you know half of everybody is turned to dust. That that's dark. I get that, but this just sounds bad. But you also had ten plus films to get you there. True. Versus three, three, May, maybe. Four. I mean, we all yeah, we all fell in love with the characters from Marvel. And we're like, cool. And they, they built them up over time. They didn't mm-hmm. just jam them into our films. And, and this doesn't sound like, I mean, the snap happens at the end of the film. It's the quest to get the gems, and you keep expecting our heroes to save the day. This sounds like the entire film is just one body blow after another to the fan base. Because none of this is not going to happen at the end of a Justice League movie. All right, this has to take place over the length and span of be, the film. Yeah, so, the Act 3 is when it would all so happen. So at the end most. of Infinity War, after the snap, Thanos is there watching the sunrise and it fades to black. Everybody was like, no, no, more, <laughs> more, no, no, no. more, more, more. No, no, no. If he were to do that, they'd be saying, no, just, just no, I ain't doing this anymore. Yeah. I mean, Again, th- this you have is... to wait till Marvel's time at the top is over for DC to start. Well, not even then. It's focus. I mean, DC DC does great in the animated realm. They oh, do yeah. awesome. Amazing. Let's Maybe bring those to fe- the feature market versus the straight to digital or DVD market. Yeah. Let me ask you all this. Does any of this sound like something you want to take your kids to go see? I don't want to take myself mm. to see it. And you know how much I'm a DC fan. Yeah. But I mean, my kiddo would go still. I mean, that's a sad thing. I mean, just listen. All right, well then, let's. let's <laughs> I mean, my, I can't use me as a subject. I'm ge- sorry. Generic family, then that's, you know, mom, mom and pop, you know, soccer mom we, with, we, with a couple of kids. Can we just kick the Zack Snyder love fan over there? Yeah, out I don't show. like Zack Snyder though. Does just, this sound like just, like a movie that you would want to take kids to go see? I mean, no, honestly, no, no absolutely not. Because you not. don't want to see Superman die. Do you, do you want to? Do you, can you buy? Would you want to after going seeing that movie, go to Burger King, McDonald's, or Wendy's and get the toys? Like the half, the oh, half that's side a good board. Point. You yeah. know, you know now <laughs> all you, I see is like blood coming down. Now, one now, side. You, now you can get dark side with Lois impaling action. <laughs> I mean, good gracious! So. Batman uh, just painting his face because he's like, "I'm Joker. I'm done." 